ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी ऑफ डायकेर कॉन थैंक्स डॉक्टर भरत साबू सर फॉर अ वार्म वेलकम आई वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू फ्रॉम लैंड ऑफ राजस्थान इंडिया एंड आई हैव दिस प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ वेरी मल्टीफेसिटेड पर्सनैलिटी डॉक्टर जिबिन ची हु हैज बीन वर्सिटाइल इन मैनी फील्ड्स he has obtained his medical degree from medical university of china then he went in the field of preventative dentistry in the middle of 90s after that he obtained a master degree in international business administration and a master degree in business informatics from rotterdam school of management in the netherlands to his professional career he has worked in preventative medicine biopharmaceutical tissue engineering medical device and biotech companies across the globe in the past 3 decades he has been specializing in transitional medicine to bring innovation and scientific advancement into the medical community and owing to his diverse experience and knowledge he has engaged in various academic activities and a speaker in diverse scientific conferences at the international level he has been attending the japanese ais summit conference swedish harmony expo and second eastern european chinese medicine annual meeting to our pleasure he was also international faculty of the uh, recently concluded 45th annual meeting of rssdi and was invited a speaker at the 7 diabetes asia study group meeting he was also a lecturer and therapist at the holy day at sea medical wellness cruise in usa which is one of the most top 100 wellness holidays voted by national geographic magazine and he is versatile in his uh, uh, he's a Chinese, but he's Dutch national now, and he's currently residing in Sweden. He speaks English, Dutch, Chinese, and Japanese. So I welcome Dr. Jivin Chi. Welcome. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction, and it's a great pleasure to be at this conference again. And uh, now I try to share the slides. And see. can you see the slides? Yeah, kindly make it full screen, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Today, I would like to introduce a new disruptive theory to looking at what have went wrong over the last century with diabetes. See, by next year, it's exactly one century with the discovery of insulin. So, the discovery of insulin is supposed to be the biggest breakthrough in medical history. And we have four Nobel Prize winners associated with insulin and insulin test. And if you look at insulin, it is absolutely the best studied medicine, the best manufactured medicine, and today is also the biggest product in the whole world. So by 2025, it will be close to 50, 60 billion dollars worldwide annually. But How come, with the best possible medicine, the best innovation in the world, we make diabetes a rare disease to be a pandemic crisis today? With all the success, we have not only each six second one person died, but we also every five seconds one person developing to diabetes. So I think we have to ask a fundamental question. So what is diabetes? This is the IDF definition. Diabetes is a chronic disease with pancreas and no longer be able to make insulin. So now let's look at what happened over the last centuries. There's only one focus that we're looking at to restore insulin release. However, if you look at the so-called counterpart of insulin, glucagon. It's not about more or less. It's completely opposite. So when you have intake of a meal, your sugar level already high, but glucagon put out 75% endogenous sugar. So how come glucagon is not a possibly the elephant in the room in the fight on diabetes? So glucagon, since its discovery, is being ill-fated because the insulin discovery, and also it's extremely challenging to accurately measure glucagon, and the mismeasurement is up to 10 to 30 folds. So just recently, there's study looking at 10 commercial glucagons, 
and none of them can really satisfy the clinical scientific need. So that has been a major challenge that we couldn't really understand what's going on with glucagon. So now today with the understanding of glucagon with the new technology, what do we really find out? Glucagon, we've been fundamentally wrong. It is not a counterpart of insulin. It's not metabolic sugar. The fundamental role of glucagon is regulating energy, amino acid metabolism. And the definition of glucagon also should be changed. So how that impact on diabetes? Let's look at this simple study, everybody familiar, using healthy subject, you do an OGTT compared with mixed diet. So what happened? This is traditionally what we understand. In healthy subject, you see no difference with doing OGTT or mixed diet. Now, with the new development, looking at accurate measuring glucose, this is the outcome. In healthy subject, when you have mixed diet, present of sugar and protein, insulin and glucagon release at the same time. So glucagon goes up at the same time in healthy subject. This is exactly what we're saying diabetic patient. Insulin glucagon release parallel. So this phenomenon not only presented in healthy study, but also in animal study, in obese patients, in bariatric surgery before and after all show the same consistent result. As soon as has a mixed diet, insulin glucose release at the same time. So just take a moment to understand what's going on here. See, if you drive a car, you have a brake and acceleration. You can use a brake and acceleration anytime. Doesn't matter how fast or how slow you drive the car. But one thing you never do is put acceleration with the brake at same time. And this is exactly what's happening when you have a parallel release of insulin glucose. So research is to say what everybody else has seen, yet to say what nobody else has thought. So this is the theory I want to bring forward today to show to the world why we've been so fundamentally wrong. Let's look at insulin resistance. Study shows even normal glucose tolerance people have already lost 60% of base cell function. Now, the normal relationship between insulin glucose is maintained by this, the postal work reverse release of insulin and glucose and at the same time, particularly phase one, burst release of insulin to control glucose. And this is facilitated by two mechanisms. One is the GIP regulation, the incretin, and the other is actually high concentration of insulin in the islet, which is a hundredfold more than the serum, and also the same in the liver. Now, once we have a parallel glucose and insulin release, what happens? All this mechanism is not going to work in. So there's only one way to make it work, is GIP release, which is stimulate insulin and glucose release at the same time. And this parallel release also cause conflict in the pancreas and liver. And in this conflict, liver must be a winner because the liver is second the largest organ and has extreme regenerative capacity, but pancreas doesn't. And why base cell function has to be disabled and also why insulin resistance? It has come to the fundamental role of glucose. Glucose is not a managing sugar, it's extremely important for our physiological conditions and particularly with energy expenditure, stress response and energy expenditure, proteins, and even with other fish. So today, that's why today's study shows that see, even for diabetic patients, glucagon should not be suppressed. It's critically important because important regulating energy expenditure. However, the very interesting thing is the energy expenditure role of glucagon will be suppressed when you have a high concentration of insulin. 
So today, if you think about this, what are we being fundamentally wrong with increased insulin, particularly long last insulin, you suppress the energy expenditure role. So now, does it really make any sense? Let's look at a very interesting study by Dr. Chu, uh, president of IDF. His group conducted 10 years follow-up, looking at onset of diabetes, say, fasting total GIP level significantly associated with diabetes development and independent of, independent of any other factors. And well, GIP, uh, GLP-1 were not. And what is even more interesting now finding is that the elevation of fasting GIP level even before diabetes and even in healthy subjects. This is exactly what we're talking about, a parallel release of insulin glucose driven by GIP function, elevated GIP function. So now let's look, look at the diabetes again. So what is going on with the insulin resistance? So we understand labor and muscle insulin resistance established much earlier before onset of diabetes. In the muscle insulin resistance, in both animal and human, you do not develop into diabetes. However, in liver insulin system, you do develop into diabetes, and also not only diabetes, also liver diseases, atherosclerosis, all associated with liver insulin resistance. And now, the insulin resistance is accelerated with a fasting glucose elevation. And today, just by measuring the fasting glucose, uh, glucose level, you already can differentiate between healthy, diabetes, obesity, and prediabetes. So now, what is happening? Diabetes is not even pancreatic disease. It's liver originated. And you look at glucose dysregulation happen not only in diabetes, but also in liver disease, like the NAFID and NASH. And NAFID today is 25% of general population. So, Today, if you look at a glucose regulation, not only with diabetes, not only with liver disease, but also with thyroid dysfunction, which is discussed a lot in diabetes, they parallel with each other. So, liver as original side of diabetes was originally already brought up in the 18th centuries by the greatest man of all signs. In the 18th centuries, Dr. Bernard Ray talked about a sugar-like substance from the liver that is related to our nutrition and food and responsible for diabetes. Because of his theory, an ENT doctor reverts that obese patient who hospitalized more than 20 times. So now let's look at diabetes development model. This we've been having falling for the last century. We look at a sugar goes up because of insulin. Now with this we say diabetes should have a different model. The development of diabetes is a crossroad between the sugar and protein, insulin and glucose. So with this, the onset of diabetes is starting with parallel insulin glucose release and related to, lead to dysfunction of GIP and glucose and later labor, and then come to pancreas and beta cell dysfunction in the end, beta cell turn into alpha cell, which has also been proven by scientific study. So if you would put this model, do they really explain what's going on? With this model, you can fit nicely with all the debate we're talking about the difference between Western and Asian diabetes, and also including the new sub-Asian groups talked by Dr. Mohan. And in the end, this is fundamental metabolic disorder, including cardiovascular disease, liver disease, even cancer. So the true cause of diabetes of all the metabolic disease is actually hypoxia, oxidative stress, and build up advanced glycation and product, which is also glycated protein, which is fundamental to diabetes and all the chronic diseases. So now I want to take a moment to see What's the true implication of glucose dysregulation? It's not a hyperglycemia, it's hypoglycemia. In both type 1 type 2 diabetes, I have developed more than 10 years 
the presence of hypoglycemia because of gluten dysregulation. So normally we regulate hypoglycemia with adrenaline and glucose, but when you have a diabetes developed to up to 10 years, both adrenaline and glucose dysregulated. They're not responding to hypoglycemia. And this is exactly the moment, according to the worldwide old guideline, we intensify treatment with insulin as a second line. So insulin takes more sugar waste, and more patient actually develop into hypoglycemia, patient die from hypoglycemia because of wrong guideline. Can I prove that? This is the study, large scale survey on severe hypoglycemia in Japan. Around 75% hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia in over 10 years patients. If you look at treatment, over 90% using insulin sulfuria. And you look at all the study we put together with duration of diabetes, the long duration of diabetes with second line insulin you actually using insulin, you increase deaths and hypoglycemia. And if you look at a major study, this is the UKPDA has succeeded because of short-term new diagnosed patient. And the others, accord, for example, because of late diabetes dysregulation, hypoglycemia because of insulin, and how much is happening. 19 of 41 patients misclassified Actually, it's a hypoglycemia classified as cardiovascular death. And the same with the publication talk about second line anti diabetic. Everything talk about cardiovascular death, but nobody talk about hypoglycemia caused by insulin. So, this phenomenon actually was long addressed at the same year as use of insulin by Jocelyn. Talk about dangerous hypoglycemia. 28 again. So, today there's no doubt. The guideline must be changed. And insulin doesn't mean that it doesn't have an effect. A insulin should be first line and also short term. So now this is take a moment looking back. The war on cholesterol. We've been fighting since 1984. It fundamentally changed our diet. The mixed diet, so-called healthy diet, bring the one thing that within 16, 17 hours is only loaded with sugar and the fat is not used. By doing that, you only need sugar. You don't need oxygen because only oxygen is needed for fat cannibalism. So life is only in one equation that in the salary we turn sugar and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water. And when lack of oxygen, today there's a tremendous scientific research looking at oxygen. So what happens, this is the vibrant effect. When you don't use oxygen, one molecule of sugar, instead of produce 36 ADPs, you produce only two ADPs. So what it means, you need 18 folds more sugar to maintain normal cellular breathing. So this is the so-called vibrant effect. So life lost meaning, we become a surviving machine. So if you look at diabetes with insulin, with nutrition, all the, uh, the some components still mean one thing, NTOR, which relate to cancer onset. So that's why today, if you look at back, insulin, uh, diabetes, glucose, and cancer, they all interdance together, yet we fail to recognize the fundamental mechanism of metabolic system. So if you look at diabetes in the new century, what is diabetes? I would envision this what we should be looking at. We should look at glucose, look at the gut and the liver inflammation, and also we should look at fasting diet with a renewed approach and looking at different breathing therapy, extremely important, and not count calorie, but count element, because protein get down to the bottom line is only nitrogen. Nitrogen is toxic and is only detox in the liver. So in the healthy diet, you should count how many elements going out, how many elements going out. So if you want to lose fat, 10 kilo fat, 
you need to breathe in 29 kilos oxygen and 80% of fat going out through carbon dioxide through breathing. So at the same time, we should look at the first line treatment and electroceutical is something we have to look into and as well as sleep medicine. So I believe real voyage of discovery is to have new eyes, not just looking at new landscape. We've been spent a whole century looking for landscape, new landscape, new treatment. But I think we should really change fundamentally why we ended here today with best knowledge we have in the whole world, diabetes making a pandemic crisis. So I hope this gives us a new way to look at what's going on and hope we'll bring a new future on diabetes. Thank you very much.